In this session, I will present a paper model-driven choice of numerical methods for the solution of the linear advection equation. The paper has been presented to the International Conference on Computational Science in 2017. In this work, we assume to have a set of numerical solver for the solution of our partial differential equation, in our case, the linear advection equation. We develop an accuracy model and a performance model for each of them. The accuracy model will deliver an error estimate that is a measure of the error which the solver will give at the end of the simulation. The performance model will deliver a runtime estimate or some other kind of measure of the cost of the simulation. It can be time to solution, so runtime, or it could be, for instance, energy to solution. Our optimization goal is to choose the best solver according to an optimization target. For instance, we might want to constrain the error, that is to accept only solvers which deliver a solution of acceptable quality. And we might want to minimize the runtime or the cost measure. Other optimization targets are of course compatible with our strategy. We deal with finite difference solvers for the solution of the linear advection equation. The linear advection equation is displayed on the left hand side of the, of the slide, while the right hand side shares the initial conditions. We have the advective quantity phi, the constant velocity c, the space and time variables. The initial conditions are represented by a linear wave with a wavelength k in the complex space. We show also the spatial discretization given by a constant grid spacing delta x and a cell index j. Space discretization is given by stances. The right hand side, which corresponds to a numerical derivative, is either computed with a fourth order stencil like this one, for instance, or a second order stencil like this one. The left hand side is discretized by using a time marching scheme such as Runge Kutta. In order to illustrate how a finite difference solver treats linear advection equations, we show an example of a first order spatial discretization coupled with a fourth order time discretization. As we see, um, the exact solution is given by the dashed line, whereas the solid line shows the numerical solution. In this case, we had some numerical diffusion given by this first order spatial discretization scheme. We use the von Neumann analysis in order to perform accuracy modeling on these solvers. We compute the solution, the exact solution, after one time step on the left hand side of this table. The solution is given by this formula, which corresponds exactly to the initial conditions given here and represented in this formula by phi j0, multiplied by a value we call amplification factor, a bar, which is given in the second line of this equation. This number, the complex number a bar, has the following properties. Its absolute value is exactly one, while its argument is given by minus the wave number times the constant advection velocity times the space, uh, sorry, the time integration step. These are important quantities because the absolute value shows or rather represents um, the amplitude of the wavelength after one time step, whereas the argument shows um, the shift to the right applied to this wave. On the other side, we have the numerical solver. Different numerical solvers will of course have different a solution after one time step, our goal is to represent this solution after one time step um, analytically and automatically. So to develop a tool which computes phi j1 automatically. After doing so, we can compute this amplification factor by dividing the solution after one time step by the initial conditions. And we will get a number which is get an amplification factor which will depend now on the numerical scheme which is used on the grid spacing and on the time step. The properties should be as close as possible to the exact 
amplification factor. So the amplitude of the number should be as close as one as possible, while the argument of the number should be as close as possible to the exact argument. The goal of this research would be to compute the amplification factor analytically and to then use it to model the error of the numerical scheme. When the amplification factor is computed, we can use it to estimate the amplitude and the phase of the resorting wave after n time steps of the numerical solution. The amplitude will be estimated as the absolute value of the amplification factor to the power of n, whereas the phase will be estimated as the argument of the amplification factor multiplied by n. In order to show that this works, we have a few examples here. In the first example, we have a first order in spatial discretization coupled with a fourth order integration scheme. Whereas in the second example, we have a second order space discretization with a third order integration scheme. In these movies, we will show again the exact solution using a dashed line, the numerical solution using a solid line, and we will also show the estimated amplitude and phase of the numerical scheme by using exactly these values. These are represented by these horizontal and vertical solid black lines. And we see that these lines follow very well the numerical wave. This is another example where the amplitude error is negligible, but the phase error is very well understandable. And we can see again that these solid lines describe the numerical wave very well. This allows us to use these two numbers in order to predict the numerical solution. And later we will use the numerical solution to predict the numerical error. This would be done without having to run the actual numerical solver, but rather to analyze it and to use the result of the analysis to predict the numerical error. We also perform performance modeling on the numerical solvers. We use the well-known roof line model, which shows that the performance of a numerical application is either bound by the bandwidth or the computational throughput of the machine. In our cases, we are clearly on the memory bound region, which is on the left hand side of this edge. And this allows us to predict the runtime of our numerical solver by knowing how many memory accesses are required and what is the um, bandwidth of the machine we are using. The error modeling and the performance modeling we have shown before will allow us to follow an optimization strategy to configure our solver at best and to then choose the best solver at disposal. Our optimization strategy starts with an integrator and a stencil representing a solver, some initial conditions to the problem, and the architecture data where the numerical solver will be run on. We use the solver description to compute the phase and the amplitude of our solver. We will then use the phase, amplitude, and the initial conditions to predict the numerical solution. We will also use the amplitude to compute the maximum current number available to the solver without running into instability problems. Using the predicted solution, we will be able to predict the error at the end of the simulation. On the other side, we do performance analysis. We automatically, automatically compute the array accesses required per time step by the solver. And we will use this together with the architecture data to predict the runtime of the solver. We will finally use these two results, the error prediction and the runtime prediction, to perform our optimization by tweaking the configuration of the solver represented by the grid spacing and the time step size. We could, for instance, constrain the error and minimize the runtime, or we could also constrain the runtime and minimize the error, or we could, of course, also enforce some other kind of optimization goals. In our cases, we constrain the error and we minimize the runtime. This slide shows some results of our optimization strategy. Each column of this plot shows a different solver, 
This is, for instance, a third order spatial discretization coupled with a third order integration scheme. The first row shows the best grid spacing for the different servers, while the second one shows the best current number, which is an expression of the time step size, for different accuracy constraints. For instance, if you want to use the P5Q3 server and your maximum allow allowable or error is in the order of 10 to the minus 3, this plot will tell you that you should use this current number of approximately 0 0.2 and this grid spacing of approximately 7.10 to the minus 2. These orange squares represent the actually best configuration for each server as derived using experiments. We run many experiments in order to de derive the best configuration for each server and we represent this configuration using the orange squares. The thick green line on each plot shows the maximum current number due to stability. We want to reproduce exactly these results without having to run all these experiments. We rather prefer to use our optimization strategy and to compute analytically the results of these plots. When we run our optimization strategy on this data, the results are shown by the blue dots here. And as you can see, the blue dots and the orange, square, the orange squares lie pretty much in the same places, meaning that there is a very good agreement between reality and our optimization strategy, and also that running all these experiments here is no longer required in order to derive the best configuration for each server. This was run on a CPU. These are the results for GPUs. Again, results of the experiments and results of the optimization strategy. It is also interesting to note that in many cases, the best configuration is not the one which allows the largest time step. For instance, the P5Q3 solver will prefer a small time step rather than a large time step. To conclude the demonstration, we also show this final slide where the, the best solver is derived. We have three different plots here. This is done on a GPU. We have again the accuracy constraint on each of the plots. And each plot shows the best discretization strategy, the best grid spacing, and the best time step size. We show again the orange squares to represent the result of the experiments, whereas the blue dots show the results of our optimization strategy. Again, we can see that there is a very good agreement with, between reality and our optimization strategy. Our optimization strategy derives the best solver for the solution of our problem and the best configuration for this solver. Work is going on to extend our research to other kinds of problems, to other kinds of solvers, and also to increase the dimensionality of the configuration of the solvers. This concludes this session.